I come from a background where I, I started off trading a, a trend continuation strategy, and the trend continuation strategy was very, 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 very good. However, to get the big wins, it came with a very low win percentage. And although I back tested it, and I can, I knew what the win percentage was, and I, and I said, I said to myself, I'm, I'm okay with that win percentage. Um, because I know that my back testing, this is the most profitable way to trade it. When things got live, it was a little bit different. And I actually wasn't able to handle it. I couldn't handle being like a 30% winner. It just, it bothered me. It caused for me to make psychological mistakes. So I do think it is important that you kind of have an idea of how much you need to win just for that kind of self-fulfillment, just to, for your own sanity. If you know you're someone um, like Jason Grayson, for example, he's someone I know he wants to win at least 50% of the time, just to stay mentally sane. So if you know that about yourself, you know that you're more prone to make mistakes, the lower your win percentage is. Sometimes you just don't, sometimes it's, it's worth, sometimes it's worth giving up some pips just to keep that sanity in it. And in the big picture, in a, in, in a way, you're actually gonna gain pips because if you're assuming you're gonna make psychological mistakes and leave pips on the table, you're just gonna damage yourself that way. Um, how do you overcome that? Well, first and foremost, you, you don't need to overcome it. I don't think you need to. I think you, you, you can put yourself in a position where you're just not in that situation, right? The, the best, the best way not to be in a bad situation is a, a avoid the bad situation, right? That's the easiest way. Like, you know, one of the things my dad taught me growing up was like, Hey, Akil, um, you know, if, if you notice that a lot of your friends get in trouble between, you know, 12 o'clock and two o'clock in the morning, don't hang out with those friends between 12 o'clock and two o'clock in the morning. And you're much, much less likely to get in trouble as well. So if you know that you're going to make a psychological mistake, if you're anything under a 30% win percentage, don't trade something that has a 30% win percentage. Does that make sense? That's the easiest way, right? Just avoid the situation. Avoid the situation. Now, if you're someone that wants to be in that position, in that situation, you just have, or just overcoming psychological battles in general, it means shifting the thought process to process over outcome. So being process-based, process-oriented versus outcome-based, meaning that what matters most, what what is more the most important thing to you is is doing the process the right way versus the result and especially in trading right you can do everything the right way and the result can be horrible right you can do everything the wrong way and the result can be good right trading is unique in that perspective so it takes shifting the thought process to really shifting your values i should say to Process is number one thing. Process is number one thing. Process is number one thing. I know if I do the process, if I follow the process correctly, the results will be what I expect. Um, and at the beginning, you've got to force yourself to do that because you're not really going to buy into it until you start seeing the results, right? You're not really going to trust it until you start doing it, right? You got to do first. You're, really, you're not really going to start trusting it until you do it. And then you start to see the results and then that's going to snowball in a positive way. Right. It's, it's funny. I, I know a lot of and we it's it's a hard thing. It's, it's a chicken and the egg thing where, you know, a, a lot of people are kind of, you know, you got to believe before you can achieve and all that stuff. Um, which has its truth. Don't get me wrong, because you, you got to start somewhere, but th there's no better thing than action. Like action is the best. Action is the best way to change that belief. And I know it's like, well, how do I get started with actions if I don't actually believe? And that's kind of the, I mean, that's kind of the, the, the question. Um, but it's always action. Always action. And, and that's why I'm a big believer of fake it till you make it. People hate that idea. I love it. Fake it till you make it, man. Fake it till you make it. Take the right actions and, and you'll start to see things work out the right way and then your belief will, will improve. But that's two ways. It's process over outcome, right? And that a lot of that's going to come in backtesting. Like backtesting, I think, is, is probably the best thing you can do for your trading psychology. Again, it's not the same thing as trading live. Um, 
But for anyone that has been through the back testing process, if you back tested correctly and you finished it and you don't have confidence in what you're doing, um, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know of anyone that's done that. In fact, and I'm not saying you go straight into live trading and you're dominant. No, but I don't. And, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. I, if you've back tested the right way, which is a very time intensive, tedious process. Um, you've essentially seen all of the ups and downs of your trading. Am I correct? You've seen the very good moments at the start where you're like, oh man, this is the best strategy ever and I'm going to make a million dollars this year. And then you've seen kind of the the pullback from that where you're like, man, I just blew like 50% of those profits I gained. This sucks. And then you've seen the bounce back and you've seen everything in between, right? If you don't have confidence in what you're doing after back testing you're doing that on you know, over a lot of pairs right thousands of trades um then i don't think you've back tested correctly so i, I think proper back testing is the bet is the first kind of psychological boost again it's by no means is it the same as trading live trust me i'm not saying you're going to back test and you'll be unstoppable trading live it's dealing with money is real pain right demo money isn't real pain back testing money isn't real pain right real money is real pain but there are ways to deal with that, right? What, what, is a, what is a way to limit the real pain that comes with trading real money? What's the process I, always, I, I often preach about how to get started with live money? You can think percentage, not money, but, but at the end of the day, we're seeing money. At the end of the day, we're, we're always seeing dollar signs. I don't, I don't it's, it's at the beginning at least, it's tough. Start small, yep. Start with a, a, a start with a small amount of money that doesn't hurt you. Right? Let me ask you guys this. If if um I'm trying to think of an example. Um if we're if if we have a if we have a, a friendly a friendly bet going on, right? Let's say there's a sporting event that's happening. And I say, hey, friendly bet, you guys want to bet a dollar in this game? Me, me and my friend Roy, Roy's a, a buddy of mine who, who we start learning to trade each, uh, together. And every year, like four years, the Cowboys and the, the Detroit Lions play. And we do a friendly bet. We, we do a wager and, you know, the loser donates to um, the winner's uh, favorite charity or charity of choice. Right. And we do a bet and charity makes a difference. I'm, I'm likely to, to bet more money when it's when it's charity. But if I challenge Roy to a bet where it's like, hey, let's do a dollar bet. Is there any pain in that if you lose? No. But when you start cranking it up, if I'm like, hey, let's do a $10,000 bet. Is there any pain in that if you lose? Some of you guys are like, no. <laughs> Probably a little bit more, right? So start off small. Put yourself in a position where it's like you kind of you kind of dip a toe in. You get used to kind of actually losing and winning money because winning is an important emotion to handle as well. You put yourself in a position where you get used to kind of feeling what it feels like to lose, but it's not nearly enough to make you kind of psychologically break down, right? You lose a little bit in the market. I don't think you're trying to get a revenge trade off a, off a, a micro account, right? You lose 50 cent on a trade. I don't think you're right into revenge trading. So that's a kind of a way to numb yourself to the situation where you start focusing on the process more because the money doesn't hurt. And then as you get experience and as you as you hopefully gain confidence throughout that process, then you start allowing yourself to trade more and more money. Um, and again, kind of numbing yourself um, on the way. Right. Again, I think the best the best example is kind of like going into a pool. Right. Um, you know, dipping your toe in your, your kind of toe gets used to it and you slowly slide your foot in. Then, you know, as you slide in, the body adapts to the, the, the temperature of the water and it gets easier and easier to put the rest of your body in. To a certain extent, there's a, there's a certain extent where you, you get to the pool. There's always this one one part where it's like, ooh, that's cold. Ooh. I just jump right in, but that's not a good trading example. You know what I'm talking about, fellas. Fellas, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So that, that's, a, that's a way to get a, that's a way to get numb to it. Um, that's a way to get numb to it. Real quick. Tim says, so if you have back tested and you have your win rate, 
uh, your profit factor and expect expectancy calculated for say a minimum of 100 trades over five years and you were starting to trade live, how do you recommend reviewing to see that live trading is coming close to your back testing numbers every quarter? Yeah, I, I do a big review every quarter. Um, I think it also depends on on the duration. Um, is this even recording? Come on, don't tell me. Hold on. I don't see my thing moving here. Gosh, the number's moving. Hopefully it's recording. Uh-oh. Should be, anyway. Um, yeah, it depends on your trading. If, if, you're a, um, if you're a day trader, you probably wanna track monthly. If you're a swing trader, um, quarterly, just because it's going to give you a better, I mean, you should track your trades all the time, but as far as a review, I think a swing trader should do quarterly. It's a good enough sample size. I don't, I don't think uh, one month of swing trading, just because of the amount of trades that you take, I don't, I don't think it's going to really give you enough information. I mean, if, if, you're, if you're a swing trader and you get five trades a month, you can easily lose three and win two and, and kind of be break even or, or, or whatnot. It doesn't really tell you much. So I, I think quarterly. I think quarterly is a good a good um, comparison. At the end of the day, annual annually is the most important thing for me, um, just because I've been through enough market conditions. To understand that, um, yeah, understand that it comes pro profit comes differently every year. Profit comes differently every year. Um, I, I've started off hot, ended cold. Started off cold, ended hot. Started off hot. Cold in the middle, hot at the end, cold in the beginning, hot at the middle, cold at the end. I've been through all of it. Um, so I think I think years is, is annually is kind of the best one. But quarterly, yeah, I would definitely do quarterly. If you're a day trader, so lower time frame, then month by month is, is a good one. Is a good one to do. So go, going back to the topic at hand, um, and that was a good question, so I, I like that breakaway. Um, the further your target gets from your entry, the less the lower your win rate is going to be. The further your target gets from your entry, what's going to be higher?